Morning guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> Today I'm down at Walcott. It is now about 20 to 6. It's high tide today at 10 to 7, so the time I get up should give me about an hour max, 45 minutes of the flood, and then I'll be fishing it on the ebb all day long. Just that I got down, I've had a look, I've come as far as you can get um, before the yellow line start. Just to the left of me is the Poacher's Pocket Pub. So I'm probably just going to go down these set of steps and to the left a little bit. I was going to go to the slipway, it looks a little bit rougher down there, but... It isn't too bad. It's supposed to be a light breeze today, but it's cold. I was up this morning. It's two degrees. Windscreen was frosty. But finished work yesterday. Went to uh, Julian Lovick's um, to pick up some worms. I'll give him the details later on. Um, Facebook link and that. Uh, fantastic lugworm. It was out yesterday pumping. Um, got some lovely lug. Um, I only got a tenner's worth of about 50, but I was, I was sorting them out last night. There's about 75, so 20, 25 of them are bled and salted. I've got half a dozen uh, peeler crabs as well, so I'll probably do a peeler crab and lug on a pulley panel and uh, get that cast out, see if there's any bass around. So without further ado, I'm going to go and get my suit on because it is raw this morning. It's still two degrees. Yeah, I'm going to get suited and booted. We'll get down there, set up, uh, we're going to dangle a worm, see if we get any takers, <laughs> you never know, just a little nibble would be, would be good, but uh, yeah, it wasn't too early today because I had a few beers last night, but uh, there you go, <laughs> nothing new there, <laughs> so um, I'll make you a deal, I'll, I'll, I'll stop drinking if you stop uh, fishing, that's a good deal, anyway, let's get down there, give it a go. down to Walcott. I'm just quickly setting up the big rod first. I've just got the Nafe 40 flip boot ocean and I've just put the uh, 7000 silk reel on there because it's got mono. Um, it's got 30 pound Shakespeare salt mono. Oh, sorry, 25 pound Shakespeare salt mono and a 60 pound Asio shock leader. I've put a 6 ounce gripper lead on that. Simple pulley rig with a panel. I've got a big. Uh, Four row cooks and roll meat hook and a two row mustad Viking bait holder hook. I was going to start, I've got a half a dozen little peeler crabs. So I'm just going to simply peel away any shell from the back and underneath. I'm going to snip that sort of halfway, just over halfway down. I must get some new scissors, these are awful. Just gonna turn that through the baiting needle. Just 
faces are like that. Let's get a couple of worms and I'll lash that on. Well, what nice big fat chunky one there. Side. Nice peelers actually. So any tail or loose bit is going to fold over. We'll finish with a half inch. Plenty of juice that coming out of that. On crab and worm cocktail. Okay, I've just threaded that on, lashed it a little bit more. Got the hooks proud. Probably just gonna cast this straight in front of me just to see what the tide's doing. Whether it's pulling left or right. Well, let's get this cast out. Because obviously this crab and worms for hopefully a bass, so it's not going to go too far. Literally to the end of the first breakers. Yeah, I'm just going to put me 30 yards out in, in, in a gully. I could probably cast it from here.
weren't happy with that first cap. It was in the surf a bit. There's a bit of weed there. And it was dragging to the right. It's quite strong left to right pull. So I've just got past that. A lot more to the left. A little bit further out. So he lifted the tripod, trying to get as much line out of the, out of the breakers. Set, loosen the clutch off a bit. You can see that's, that's six ounces there and it's, it's a strong tide today, strong tide. Okay, we just set up the other rig. That's set up quite nicely now. I'm quite happy with that. Just resting in the surf. On the other rod, I've got a two up, one down, clip down rig. It's got my under Lafay 40 foot long cast rod tube in the tip, full carbon, Shakespeare salt, surf 7000, it's got 50 pound braid, that's the nine strand Hercules braid, 60 pound ASIO shock leader, then the rig, I've got a 70 pound Kiyoki uh, rig body, 25 pound C-Max line, that's the uh, Ultima line, floor carbon, and then I've got every every hook is um, the 1-0 on the top, 2-0 and a 2-0, all Mustang Vikings, and all with, uh, just with a bit of worm and squid, one worm and squid on every one. I'm just going to have a bit of a scratch in me, because it's got one down below the lead, six ounce lead, Two above. I'm going to cast this and take the trolley, put it to the left because it is pulling hard left to right. I don't want to put the rods together on the tripod and risk them uh, bouncing out, tripping over each other.
see that weed might be a little bit of a problem today, so might have to assess things in a minute. We're gonna get tons of weed. And it's a big tide pull as well, so I'm gonna get this big bait sorted out. And if not, we'll have to have a move and see if we can fish between any weed patches. We'll give it half an hour here, 45 minutes. If not, we'll move back down further onto the right where the uh, slope is, where the ramp goes down where the parking bay is. But it might settle down when it gets a high tide and on the ebb, so we'll see. But if it doesn't, we'll know, because it should be high tide now. 10-7. And then it's going to be ebbing, so... It's five past seven, so... Give it half an hour, it's got quarter to eight, and then we'll make a decision what we do. Okay, it's quarter to eight. The tide's really ripping, absolutely ripping. Even seven ounces is not holding if I go out any distance. Um, and the weed's just as bad. It's all that sort of like pamphlet weed. It's not clingy weed, you can just shake it off, but it's like a really sandy, dry weed. But it's just clogging up everything. Um, I've literally just cast it out 15, 20 yards at the back of the breaker. See if there's any petroleum bass, but I'll give it 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Because I know it's, it's not really fishing at the minute, you know what I mean? It's maybe I'll chance for a little dab or something in the surf or a, a bass, but we're going to have to move. It seems pointless uh, wasting good bait and good worms. That's a shame. It's just the way it is. Sea fishing, she's one cruel mistress. That was a lovely day as well. Lovely day. It's getting that quite warm. I was just contemplating where to go next. Okay, it's about eight o'clock, just gone, but just been talking to a couple of lads. The guy from the right, he's fishing as well, so come down and said, how are you getting on? So that's, that's horrendous. He said, yeah, he's got exactly the same issues. Just talking to a guy as well, walking his dog. He fished it yesterday and the day before, but the tide and the weed's horrendous. So I'm gonna make a move. There's no point staying here. And he said, it's just as bad further down here, the slip, so. I was talking to him where to go. I was I'm in an eye about Hopton, but he said try Cart Gap and fished it not long ago, it's fished well. So he said go down there, go two pens to go down the slip ramp, two pens to the left. Uh, it's quite a nice gully there. So I'll give that, it's not too far away. I'll see you again at the second venue. Okay, it's five past nine. I've just got down to the second venue, went to Cart Gap but it's looking really rough down there, as it always is with the pens and that, and I had to just quick cast around with the lead. I've just come a bit further along to Eccles, down the lane. I've just cast out. I've got one rod, I've not even set anything up yet. I'll probably give this half an hour, 45 minutes here, see what's happening, make a decision. Might have to move somewhere else, but that's the way it is. But I've just got the two up, one down ring on there. I still had the worm on, I just literally clipped everything off, chopped it in, put it back on, still got worm and squid on each hook, so it's not really alright here for, I've had a few dogfish before, there's plenty of dabs and whiting and bits and pieces, so we'll see just what happens, we'll see what happens. But you've just got to adapt and, you know, move with, with nature if that's what she wants, so. Where we were is impossible, there's no point in staying there, you can stay there all day long, but... At the minute, fingers crossed, this looks manageable. The tide's definitely nowhere as bad. I mean, it's still... I've got a few knocks there. It's still bouncing a little bit, but... I'm not even set the tripod, I'm just going to use my trolley. I'm just going to see what's what. See if there's much wind, 
uh, much weed or you see what happens for the first half an hour before committing. I can bring it in to see what's what, see if there's wee build up or I thought I had a couple of little taps. But, uh, down the ramp because I've fished this a couple of times before. We're just down where the ramp is. Obviously where they use this uh, live boats and get your boats off of that. Straight out there's a bit of a sort of deep channel going. We've got that cast straight in front of me. Ever so slightly, you can still go left to right, but I can at least it up tide it a tiny little bit. for 10 minutes, if it's all good, we'll set the other rod up and set the station up properly. And what I was going to say, that's a problem of uh, fishing here sometimes. I've just got to wash my rod now because the great big black seals just come up and it works the same line all the time. Just the end of the point, or just inside. the bottom of this slip into the gully. There's obviously a good source of shellfish and bits and pieces fish down there because they're always along here. Okay, we're holding nicely. I think I'm going to commit, get the other big big rod set up, get the crab bait back on, and let's try and make a day of it. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Made the decision. I'm going to commit. Just missed a bite on there. The worms are racked off. I'll be getting a little nibble now. Set the big one up again. Just refresh the bait. Exactly the same as it was before. I just put another half a peanut crab on the back there. Got that last dog. And to get this one to the left because it's still going from left to right ever so slightly. Tides on the ebb quite fast. Just making sure the pulley's clean, no sand and anything in there.
out and we're fishing. I'm going to sort all this lot out now. Oh, what a morning. Yeah, it's one of them days you just can't get settled and uh, comfortable. Just always constantly out trying to adapt. Tide all over the shop. Here's them, it's just like it's still going left and right. There's a lot of sort of, I've noticed down at Walcott as well. There's a lot of surface weeds, like floating on, on if you don't get your line up and then out straight away, you on your line. It's not too bad here, on the bottom. I noticed the second castle went further out and there's A lot of floating weed. Obviously yesterday I was talking to a lady. It was rough as hell and they all came down and everyone was watching it off the top of the town. And was massive waves crashing into that the other day. Probably ripped up a lot of weed. A lot of flotsam and jets and floating about. Probably why the seals back back and forth. Bob's been kicked over, disturbed a load of stuff. At least we're fishing now. I've calmed down. <laughs> That's the way you've got to accept it, innit? You're fishing in the sea at the end of the day. Yeah, but sometimes when you all that anticipation, you make the effort, you get up, you come down. Within about five, ten minutes, you just know now. Mother Nature's not playing the game, she ain't playing fair. She's gonna kick you where it hurts. And, uh, mind you, the clutch is set quite good. But they're not that bad, I hope. Oh, it's cold this morning, two degrees. It was wrapped up. Now, took what I got back to the car. Two jumpers on. Got this on, is it? Still too warm. Since I've got it, I've only been here for half an hour. The water's gone down. Good 10, 12 foot already. But we're holding now. I'm going to sort this junk out, what a mess. But, uh, I've got the bait I've got today. I've got loads of lovely fresh love work. I split them into two or three packs of their own TNA and stuff. But nice big fat wiggly love worms. Weird. I've got some uh, lovely peelers, look. Just have to lift the shell out, that was pretty much coming off the wall off. Nice big fat plump ones. Might try salt if the uh, Salted log in a minute. I bled them last night and salted a load. But I'm not, I'll probably have to do this with all these as well. Look at me, look at them. Absolutely fantastic, them. Split them down into three packets anyway. Fast. Yeah, I've got my usual suspects. Got herring. 
got knuckles, I've got muscles, I've got prawn. Just sorted a load of lugs last night. Put the needle in them, got the blood out, sorted them. They're really tough. I might give them a go in a minute. I've got two packs of them. Load of wraps in there, mackerel and squid wraps. Definitely ain't gonna run out of bait today. Got some of the old shed on prawns that work really well actually at Hopton, so I might give them a go in a bit. Some more king prawns, a few more mussels. They're all frozen solid. Box. Nice pack. Okay, it's half ten, just done what I said I was going to do. So I've kept worm, squid on the top stew, middle one, got a nice big bit of mackerel, the squid, and on the bottom, just lashed the whole king form with a little bit of squid, just followed it around the bend of the hook, mainly around the tail and a bit around the head so it don't come off. See if there's any preferences. Right, let's get this cast out. I'm going to probably straight in front of me because it doesn't want to be dark in it. Because that was bowed to the left, and now it's bowed to the right, and then it's slack. So it's all over the shop at the minute. Probably going to walk this down as well a little bit further. So I It's not too bad here when I'm casting out, feeling the leg down, I'm just keeping the tightest line, pinching the line between the fingers. Got any slack line going in the water, picking up weed. Alright, place your bets. Top, middle, or bottom. I reckon the mackerel. I'm on brave with this one, so I'll be able to see any bites. It'll be sharp rattles. No oh, one thing, I'm bloody starving. I wish I bought some food with me today. I'm normally alright till I get home. I think I need a, I was going to say a bite or two, but not with the food. A bit of a bit of excitement to stem the hunger away. Eh? Do the hunger. What I might do in a minute, now it's pretty much down to low water. Well, I think it's low water half one, so still got three hours. Bring this big bait in, right hand one. I'll wheel it down onto the beach. I'll probably move down as well. I'll get that big bait, cast off the end of that big post there. 
probably see it at low water when this tide goes out a bit more. Just see where the waves are pulling back now. It goes down quite steep. There's quite a lot of shingle. Stone down there. Big bang on there a minute ago. I know there's such a wave, but. Oh, it's quarter to 11. We'll bring this one in, wheel it down there, and get it cast off the end of the post.
slightly smaller hooks and just put them in the size one out of these hooks on. And it's just simply again, I'm just going to stick with worm. Worm and squid on all three. It's got a few beads on this one, a bit of bling. The water's quite coloured after being churned over. Just going to hook that one on. It's a lot longer bottom snood. It's cast in. Further of that one, just whacked it as hard as I can. Got way past the point, so now it's low water, they might be hanging out further in the deep water. The sea's churning a lot of things over, it's just I find it ends up uh, twisting and turning, and it gets the uh, snooze get wrapped around the clips, it's a lot more prone to tangles. I saw myself another rig out as well, I was thinking, trying to save a blank. So I'm going to give that one 10 15 minutes, probably bring it in, switch it over, do a scratch of rig as well. And just hope for anything. <laughs> anything. I don't care how small it is today. Tiny dab, scrap wire. I deserve it, the effort I put in today. It's been a hard day. Switch baits, change rigs, move places. It's got to pay off. It's got to. It's about half past 12, 20 to 1. It's been so quiet, not on a knock. Even the worms are coming back untouched, trying mackerel, herring, everything. Everything's coming back clean. Uh, no rattles or nothing. So what we'll do is while I'm sitting there, rather than letting the peter crabs go to waste, I've just made a load of baits. Some big ones, some small ones. I'll take them out, backpack them and freeze them. This morning it said closed, but that's probably, I don't know what time that opens. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's near the um, car park. Okay. Where the car, that car park, and just go up the ramp. Yeah, you just, the cafe's there. Good on the end here. Whether 
it's just that's two or three days of heavy winds and storms. And I'm not sure whether it just pushed all the fish out, but it's not even a dab or anything. No, not even white. Strange. It's normally good for white. Came down, there's some nice dabs out around. Nothing. Right, it's coming up to half one, more packed up, back at the car. Well, that was diabolical, but well, it's absolutely boiling. It's 18, 19 degrees now, and every time it's like that, coarse fishing or any fishing, when it's down to zero, frost on the ground, baking hot day, it's rubbish. The last two or three days, it's been high winds and storms, crashing seas from the people that I spoke to, it's been over the wall. I knew it was going to be tough, and then got down to Walcott, made the decision to move, came here, uh, fished it, had a couple of knocks, a couple of times of worms and rag, but no positive bites, um, so nothing to report, no fish, but that's the way it goes, you win some, you lose some, you just got to get back up, dust yourself down and go again, gives you a bit more determination for next time I suppose, so hey hey we blanked, but that's the way it goes, we just have to try and get harder next time. See you again in another video. All the best guys. Cheerio.